All right. So we ended right here last time. And right here. The, now we're talking about free fall. Now remember, free fall. If you look up here, free fall. If I drop the ball, that's free fall. If I throw the ball up in the air, it comes down. If I throw the ball, that's free fall. If I throw the ball, ball to um, Mr. Bonilla, throw the ball. He throws it back. Those are also, it's all free fall. It's only under gravity on that. But how does it work? Well, we think of a ball drop. Now, the first case we're going to take, if we drop a ball. Zero, one, two, three seconds. So we're going to let it drop for three seconds. What happens to it? Keep in mind our acceleration of gravity. G on the Earth, there is 10 meters per second squared, our sea level average. 10 meters per second per second. So every second we are going to gain 10 meters per second. So we start at zero velocity, zero distance, because I'm dropping the ball, right? I'm dropping the ball, I start at zero, drop it, speeds up. After one second of free fall, how fast am I going to be going? If I accelerate at 10 meters per second per second, it's going to be at 10. One second, I'm going to be at 10 meters per second. After two seconds, well, next thing, I'm going to go up to 20, then up to 30. And notice, what am I doing to time each time? I'm multiplied by 10. Where is that 10 coming from? Gravity, yeah, the acceleration of gravity. Velocity is equal to g times the time. Now remember, this works for any gravity. Now, 10 is our value for the Earth. If we went to Mars, it's about 4. If you're on the Moon, it's about 1.6. By the way, our general formula of that would be V equals AT. This works for any constant acceleration. In the formulas we use, A, a is always a constant. Okay, so you might want to note that somewhere. A, acceleration is always constant in our formulas. So it's just a number. If we had change in acceleration, we would have to do calculus. That's what calc that's why Newton invented his calculus, was to be able to deal with changing accelerations. We don't do that. If you want to do that, go take AP Physics C. They do that. So cost acceleration. But I have a question. Well, are you at 10 meters per second that entire second? No. I mean, if I had this clock, it went tick, little segment, tick, 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 tick. We start at zero. It didn't get to 10 until that final click. It's like click, 10. So remember, we were at below 10 most of that 10, one second. Now, so this, now velocity is pretty easy, right? You just fall. 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, so on. This is a little harder. Well, first of all, I'll say, well, you know, one second times 10, 10 meters. Is that right? Did I fall 10 meters in that first second? No, because to fall 10 meters in one second means I had to go 10 meters per second that entire second. weren't at 10 meters per second the entire time. Zero to 10. Got to think like average. Average. And what was the average velocity during this one second? 10. Five. My average velocity was five, right? Zero plus 10 divided by two is five. Well, 1 times 5, so if I fall at 5 meters per second for 1 second, I will have fallen 5 meters. During that 1 second, I have fell 5 meters. But because I started at 0, I ended up at 5 meters. That's an important value. After 1 second of free fall, you fall 5 meters. 5 meters. Doesn't sound like much. What is that about? 
So about set, you know, 16 feet. One second of free fall. Although I can tell you, having jumped off a 10 meter board, you know, you go dive, you see the diving Olympics or a 10 meter board. Obviously, after one second, you're only halfway down. 10 meter board does have enough time to make you think, oh my God, what have I done? Uh, because that was what was running through my head. You know, for me, that wasn't, it, by the way, if I, I didn't jump off the 10 meter board by choice. It was a graduation requirement where I went to college. Because I had to do it in full uniform. It's a, it's a Navy thing, you know, bend, ship, jump off, things like that. How did you do it? What? How did you do it? I did do it. It was a graduation requirement. You don't graduate unless you do it. Well, yeah, I have a thing about heights, but also our 10 meter platform, the Naval Academy, is kind of built in the roof. So you start at roof level. In other words, when you're at the top of the thing, you're basically at the level of the roof of the building. And the pool looks like about that big. <laughs> you know, and because there's a lot of people at it, the whole thing's vibrating. The whole tower is shaking. But if you had to jump off an aircraft carrier, you're going to go off a lot higher than 10 meters. The lowest spot on an aircraft carrier is a lot higher than 10 meters. That one, no. The, the, the decks on the Missouri, that's only 16 feet above the water. You're only 16 feet above the water when you're on the Missouri. It's not very far. So about five meters, so about half that distance on that. So the next second, we look at this next second. Next second, we fall 15 meters. Now remember, we already started five meters below. So when I added that, after two seconds of free fall, I'm 20 meters below where I went. And you might say, well, two times 20 is 40. No, remember, average. Average. 25 meters. So we're at 45 meters. Notice each segment we're going farther and farther. But do you see a pattern here? In the first second we fell 5 meters. In the next second we fell 15 more. In the next second we fell 25 more. In the next second after that, how far do you think I'm going to fall? 5, 15, 25, 35 then. Notice, how much am I going up every time? Ten. Going up 10. Ten. That, that 10 came around again. Notice even the first one. How does 5 relate to 10? It's half. By the way, this is a pattern for any, for any constant acceleration. If you drop it or like you roll it down a ramp, the first second you're going to go half the acceleration. Every second after that you're going to add that acceleration. Because say we took Mars. On Mars, on Mars, you're at about four meters per second squared. So the first second of free fall, you're going to fall two meters. Then you're going to fall two more. You know, you're going to go up. Basically, it's going to go up four more. So you're going to get six. So you're going to be at eight. Four more would be ten. So you're going to be at eighteen. Four more is fourteen. You're going to be at thirty-two and so on. So it goes up that, it goes up the same. So the idea is half, you fall half the acceleration the first second, the, every segment after that goes up by whatever the acceleration is. In the case of Mars, it will go up four. On Earth, it goes up ten on that. But what's the relationship here? It's very hard to see. And we actually would have to graph it. But our relationship for distance, and that's what you guys are doing your lab about today. Distance equals one half g t squared, which means our general form will be one half a t squared. One half g, the number, just a number. Distance is directly proportional to the time squared. And that's what this relationship is telling us on that. This is what you're going to be looking at in your lab today. That's what our lab is about today. Is it really directly proportional to times squared on that? The other thing you look at is like, where the heck does the one half come from? One half. Why one half? It has to do with graphs. Anyone need more time on the slide?
if we had a velocity versus time graph, right? We did this last time, remember we had a velocity versus time graph, and the line in the slope is acceleration, right? That's what the slope of, an, of that line is. But we can get other information. The area below the line, if you take the area, and that's one of those other, these calculus things. You know, that's what, that's what integrals and things like that are for, is to find areas. The area below the line is displacement. Now notice, what shape is that? What do we call that? Think of it more like on its side. It starts with a T. It's a trapezoid. And if you think about the formula for an area of a trapezoid, it's one half, I think the sum of the bases, something, something about sum of the bases times the height. That's where the one half comes from. Okay, the one half comes from that, that area, because we're dealing with area on that constant acceleration, constant acceleration. All right, questions? Now that was for dropping a ball. What happens if I throw the ball up? Throw the ball in the air. Now, when I do it this way, I start zero. But when I throw that ball up in the air, I gave it some velocity in the beginning. Do I have to take into account that velocity? Yeah, because if I drop the ball and let it hit there, and I throw the ball up and let it hit the ground, does it take the same amount of time to hit the ground? No. So it, other things have to be happening. OK? So this diagram is actually in your book. But if we look at this, if I throw the ball up, this guy is throwing this ball up with a velocity of 30 meters. We call that V sub 0. V sub 0. And V sub 0 means, just think of it as our start velocity. Now, this guy gave it a positive 30, so it's upward. If I threw it downward, it would start with a negative 30. Because obviously, if I throw the ball down like that, it doesn't get to the ground a lot faster than when I dropped it. Yeah, because I gave it some initial velocity downward. So we take that into account. Remember, up is, up is positive, down is negative. Now notice, g is now negative 10 meters per second squared. Negative. Down. I would make a diagram or note the diagram, but it's always a good idea to have this. We're going to be putting a couple things here. So when I go upward, so now I have to add something to my formula. There I had this. But now I have to take into account the starting velocity. GT is going to be negative. Right? So we're always adding a negative number. So each second, I went from V, I added negative 10. 30 plus negative 10 is 20. Plus the negative 10 is 10. Plus negative 10 is 0. Now, we're at the top. Now, we all agree that when I throw the ball up, at some point, it has to go to 0 velocity. And before it can come down again, which is negative velocity, I has to go to zero, right? It's kind of like running your finger down the number line, right? You start the positive side, start the positive side, we run down the time. Some point it gets to zero, and then we go into the negatives. Same idea. But let's consider this. When velocity goes to zero. Now we've already talked about can you have a non-zero velocity and have a zero acceleration? We have a word for that. It starts with a C. Constant, constant velocity, zero acceleration. But this is a different case. What happens to acceleration at the top of this when velocity goes to zero? And I want you to write that down. What do you think happens to graduate gravitational 
the acceleration, when it, right down your nose. What happens to gravitational acceleration at the top? When velocity goes to zero at the top of the arc, write down what you think happens to the value of the gra of gravitational acceleration when it's at the top of that arc, when it gets to the very top, like that. Write down what you think happens to it. The reason we do this is because this is one of the a big misconception of science. Misconception. And misconception is things everybody thinks happens. And it really isn't true. It's kind of another thing when you have to say, what does the moon not have? A lot of people say gravity. Does the moon have gravity? Yeah. Yes. What it doesn't have is air. air. Yeah, it has no air. It has gravity. It has gravity because it has mass. Anything with mass. You have gravity. You all produce gravity. You have mass. You produce gravity. A little bit. You still produce gravity on that. You have mass. You have gravity. Now, how many of you think the acceleration of gravity goes to zero at the top of the arc? Goes to zero. Goes to zero. How many think it stays at ten? It was ten up, ten down, still this ten. How many think it's somewhere it's not zero, but it's not ten, somewhere in between? All right. So let's take a look. First of all, I want you to look at the brick. Look at this brick. What's the velocity of that brick? Zero. What's the acceleration? The net acceleration of that brick? Zero. Zero. So we could use a word to describe something with zero velocity and zero acceleration. We can say it's stationary, right? Like right, stationary. Now, we know the velocity goes to zero. If the acceleration went to zero at the top of the arc, what's the word we use for zero velocity and zero acceleration? Stationary. That would mean that my ball, when it got to the top, would stop. Just stay there. Have you ever thrown a ball in the air and just stayed there? If you did, I want you to show it to me because I really like to see that. I did once because I had my first stick. Yeah, but you know, that, but see, that was something else from the force. I mean, in midair, did it ever stop just in midair? No, it doesn't. Which means acceleration does not go to zero because it starts coming back down again. This is the point. So why would acceleration gravity this 10 on the way up and 10 on the way down? Why would it not be 10 at the top? It's always going to be 10. Why would it not be 10? And the thing is, it is. It's always 10. In fact, even on this brick, you know there's 10 meters per second squared downward being pulled at it. It is accelerating downward. Remember, what was the word I used when I said, said the acceleration? Did I just say acceleration? I used another word with that, didn't I? I used the word net. Net. Because although there's one going down, there's also one going up. That's what keeps you like in your seats. You know, gravity pulls you down, there's another force pushing up. We'll learn about that in chapter four, what that force is. So we have that. So on the way down, now we start coming back down. Now at four seconds, V equals negative 10 meters per second. Thus, speed's the same, 10 and 10, but the velocity's different. Positive's up, negative is down. Here, negative 20 meters per second, negative 30 meters per second, negative 40 meters per second, and so on and so forth as we go down. Keeps going like that. Now when we go up our distances, it still works the same way. We start here at zero. This is time zero. Here. 30 to 20, our average 25, so after one second, I'm right there. 15 is our average, 25 plus 15 is 40, so I'm two seconds, five. Three seconds, I'm at the top, so I've gone up to 45. I come down again at five seconds, I'm gonna be back at 40 because it's 45 plus a negative five, negative 15, negative 30, so I'm gonna be here at six seconds, or Four seconds, five seconds, six seconds, and then they have this one down here. It would be seven seconds and so on. But notice, if it took me six seconds to, if I look at, let go of the ball like that, it takes six seconds to get to my hand. How long did it take to get to the top? Take six seconds to get back to my hand? Three. Three to the top. 
takes half. So it took 10 seconds to get back to my hand. It was at the top head, five. This is one way you can measure things. You can see how high did my ball go? Well, I just count how, how long it take to get back to my hand. I know half that time is how long it took to get to the top. And I can use my calculation. Because we start here, D equals, well, we have that one half GT squared part, right? That's the part for gravity. I've got to add this part. What happens here? This term, this would be if there was no gravity. If I threw the ball up and there was no gravity, this is where it would go. So this is my zero g part. This is the gravity. This is what happens to it when I apply the gravity to it. So they go together. We have two parts. The only other part we would add to this formula is we're saying we start at zero. We're calling wherever we start at zero. You might call, say I was on top of this cliff and I was throwing it down. A lot of times it's easier if I call the bottom zero. I call the top, I say, okay, I started at 200 feet. Where did I end up at the bottom? Sort of thing. By the way, this is where the quadratic equation comes in. We'd have to use the quadratic to find time and things like that. We're not going to do that. All right. Questions? All right. So, now, 